read it when I was in Spain. Uh, it's called The Shadow of His Wings. It's written by a guy called Father Hedion Goldman. Father Gerion Goldman. He was a Franciscan priest. He died a few years back in, um, in Japan. Now he was German and he was a seminarian. He was a seminarian when war broke out you know, under Adolf Hitler. He was, there's his picture, so he was conscripted. Franciscan seminarian, all the seminarians were cleared out of it and put in uniform and told to go to the front line. He describes it all in his book. He says it was hard. He actually ended up in the SS that were feared. They were called Nazis. Um, they were feared. He, he, was in, he was in France. And people naturally feared and hated him. But he was able to do a great deal of good because he kept to his values. All throughout the war, he was able to touch people, both um, people he was fighting against fighting against, or well, he was a, um, eventually a chaplain and also a medic. He was able to administer the last rites to people, both uh, of the Allies and of the Germans. And he did a fantastic life. You see, at least twice he escaped. With, um, he was on the verge of being, you know, uh, executed. And he escaped at the last minute. He didn't escape, but he was let off. We can see the power of prayer in his life. He put his good fortune and his fulfillment of his vocation down to the prayers and sufferings of two German nuns who dev devoted 20 years of their lives to interceding for him. And John, are you going to... John is going to give us one example. This book is full of miracles, folks. It really is. I recommend... Um, if you really want to read an adventure story which is true and shows the power of God, this is it. And this is just one example from the... I woke up. It was about 2 a.m. I thought I had heard a loud voice. I jumped up and went to the wounded, thinking one of them had called me, but they were quiet. Two were already dead. I went to the two sentries and asked if they'd heard anything. They assured me I must have been mistaken, since all was quiet. It was quiet. Very quiet. A strange uneasiness took hold of me, but since there was nothing wrong, I lay down again. But I could not sleep. Half awake, half dozing, I tossed from side to side. Suddenly I heard a loud, almost threatening voice. Get up and work, Schnell! There is no time to waste! The voice was so loud that my ears tingled. Moreover, the sound seemed to fill the whole valley. I jumped up and looked around excitedly in the dark, but I could see no one. I ran to the two sentries and asked if they'd heard anything, but they said I had been dreaming and burst out laughing. It was indeed very peculiar. I became alarmed. Who had called me? Completely unnerved, I sat down under a tree. A strange fear took hold of me. I could not sleep, and I did not know what I should do. Look up, looking up into the clear sky, I again heard the mysterious voice, this time really threatening me. Get up and work, it is past time. Completely unnerved, I lost control of myself altogether and cried out, What's the matter? But there was no answer. The sentries rushed up and asked, what are you yelling about? They assured me they had heard nothing. At the same time, remarking to one another, with some it begins in the head. I did something I had not done for months. I took my pick and shovel and began to dig a foxhole. About six o'clock in the morning, the other soldiers awoke. They formed a circle around me and jokingly admired the half-finished foxhole I had dug on the rocky ground. They asked, what happened? One soldier joked, now that we have won, that we have won the war, even non-commissioned officers do work. I did not mind their jeering. They sat around, enjoying the spectacle. About seven o'clock, Falburn, my driver, brought breakfast, well prepared. 
he could not understand when I told him to set the food down and dig a hole for himself. He knew me for a calm man and looked at me in surprise, as if wondering whether something had happened to my mind. I have no time to explain it all to you, but for the sake of your wife and children, dig and dig fast. He was manifestly impressed by what I said and the way in which I said it. That, coupled with the evidence of my half-dug hole, impelled him, with his experienced hands, to dig a hole for himself. The other soldiers laughed and said, A contagious digging disease has broken, there, broken out. We continued to dig while the others looked on. About nine o'clock, my foxhole was large enough for me to lie down in. Exhausted, I crawled out, put on my shirt, and stretched myself out on the ground to rest my weary, weary bones. Looking up into the sky, I was suddenly struck with horror. High up in the heavens, ten bombers were circling like vultures. They swooped down and dropped at least twenty bombs. Falburn and I jumped into our foxholes, while the others hastily sought for safety behind trees or by lying down on the ground. I turned on my stomach to protect the blessed sacrament which I had with me. All hell was loosed down upon us as the bombing continued. With my last strength, I was able to pull myself up higher, lest I be suffocated by the shower of dust and dirt and pieces of rock and metal. Then I fell unconscious. After the attack was over and the valley had been turned into a smoking wilderness, other soldiers came looking for survivors. Falburn and I were the only ones. It took ten minutes of artificial respiration to revive me, after I had lain almost thirty minutes covered by debris. Who had called me in the night? Who had saved me? Three weeks after this incident, I received a letter from Sister Solana May. On the very night when I had heard the voice commanding me to get to work, she had experienced such fear about me that she had hastened to the chapel and prayed until morning. Guardian angel, save him. She asked that I write her at once and tell her if anything had happened to me. She also said it was about 2 a.m. when she woke with such fear and the exact hour when I first heard the voice. Thus was my faith bolstered still further during these terrible times. 